If you're looking to take payments online for your digital product, don't make this mistake of using Stripe for it. Now, there is a whole discussion online about how Stripe handles sales tax. And the truth about that is Stripe does not remit and deal with the tax liability for you. Meaning if you take payments through Stripe for international purchases, it's your liability to register in all those countries for sales tax, GST or VAT and remit them. Meaning you need to have someone who will help you file those things and you will need to collect that and then you will need to pay that, which is a lot of effort and most small businesses overlook that. Now, if you're selling digital products, there are better ways to take money online. Now, taking you know money through Stripe means you have all the liability because you're the seller. But there are ways how you can go around that, as one Reddit user mentioned inside of here, by using a merchant of record. Now, what is a merchant of record? There are many ones. Most of them have very bad interfaces like Paddle, Fastspring. I've used all of them and their interfaces look absolutely horrible and you don't really get people to convert on their checkout pages. It doesn't look as trustworthy as Stripe does, right? Now, but that would be the solution. What's a merchant of record? It's an authorized reseller for your product, meaning you sell a book. Let's say you sell a book, an ebook or something, or a software or whatever. You sell something for $35, right? Now they will sell it for you, meaning you get your checkout page, but on a legal basis, they are the seller, meaning they take the 35 and $5 will go to taxes, they pay the taxes for you, they are registered in every country everywhere. So $30 is left, then for doing that, they'll take like $3 and then you get $27 sent to your bank account. Now, this is how this works. And it's a very interesting way that allows you to take payments globally without having to deal with taxes. And my personal favorite merchant of record is polar.sh. I use it for everything. I'm not sponsored to say this, but I'm just really blown away by their system. It just works beautifully. It looks amazing. So let me show you how you can start taking payments without having to worry about taxes today using Polar. So they also have great documentation that will help you set this up um, with their checkout API. So if you go to the checkout API here, you will see that you can create a checkout. You can even link metadata to it to identify which user is who on that checkout. But let's go on their dashboard here and let's generate a new product together. So we're going to generate product. We're going to create a new product here on polar.sh and I'm just going to call this um, sale, right? And I'm going to do monthly pricing or one-time pricing. I'm just going to do one-time pricing. Fixed price, $25. And then we can add custom fields, but we don't need that. But we can also add optional metadata to the product if we want. We don't need that necessarily. Um, we can, you know, matter some credits, file uploads, do some custom stuff. We don't really need that. Let's create the product. Now we have created the product and now I can go on share on the product. And now I can create a new link, which I can put on my website. Let's call this buy. And, you know, we don't need a success URL necessarily. So let's create this. Beautiful. And you could have the success URL actually also go to a page on your website saying, hey, thank you for purchasing. Right. So they do a lot of that work for you. So now here's an exciting thing. You can add metadata to it like user underscore ID. And then when users go on that link, you can associate that ID with the checkout. So, you know, if I were to look at this URL uh, and save that link, you could add certain things on there. Now you probably want to make them dynamic and not hard coded. So we're just going to keep it like this, but let's save and let's uh, copy that here. You could also embed their elements, which is also another option. But let's just copy this URL here 
and let's put that in the browser. And as you can see, it will generate um, a checkout where people can pay online. Now that's fantastic. Now there are a few cool ways how we can also index and, and pre-fill the customer email. You could add the query parameter of customer email to the checkout URL here of you do question mark customer underscore email equals hey at example.com. You can just fill it in here with a query parameter and you will see that it will pre-fill the email with hey at example.com, right? So this is really cool. Uh, you can also pre-fill the customer name. You can you do any custom field data, pre-fill uh, custom field data in a slug of the custom field. You probably want to work with the reference ID because this will allow you to then associate this checkout to a specific user, right? And I would also pre-fill you know, definitely the email, but what is important, uh, let's copy our checkout URL here, that you want to consider is how do you link that checkout to the user who you know has the account so you can upgrade their account and all those kinds of things. For that, do a question mark. Um, you do reference underscore ID, and that will be user one, two, three. You'll put your user ID in here, and you can just like, write a little bit of code or just you know dynamically generate this with a formula but you have the reference ID and now that checkout is linked to that specific reference and you will be able to take the payment and you will find the ref re the reference ID in the event coming back in the webhook that will go to your scenario go through your workflow and you'll be able to get that ID and upgrade the user's account because they have paid now this is pretty cool and as you can see, they have a very high, nice, modern converting checkout with one click checkout, um, Apple Pay. You can also um, enable that, Apple Pay and Google Pay. So it's really competitive. It's finally a merchant of record who looks really good and actually is proven to convert really well. So if you don't want to deal with taxes, remitting all that, especially if you're starting out building a SaaS, selling a digital product, definitely go with Polar. It's the best thing out there and it's a no-brainer using them. I hope this video was helpful and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Take care.